Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. And in the midst of this ridiculous five-game fortnight, I've been trying to keep up, but there was a new manager hired who I haven't even spoken about yet. So now the weekend has got out of the way. We are going to answer the question, who exactly is the new Barnsley boss? Well, his name, and excuse the pronunciation for those people who expect me to be fluent in 100 languages, is Valerian Ishmael. And he was announced, I think it was on Friday, it was certainly over the weekend at some point. I was completely overworked and haven't got it done. Um, this is what Barnsley said on their website there. Um, excited to announce the appointment as of Valerian Ishmael on a head coach. on A three-year contract there, um, a successful playing career with Bayern Munich there, 45 years old. Um, and I think the key thing there is recently manager of Lushk Linz, who were very much in the news in the Europa League, in the Austrian Bundesliga, which we've heard of before in the prism of Barnsley, haven't we? And um, in the news over lockdown, let's just say. Um, there is what Barnsley have done manager-wise recently. So Paul Heckingbottom was uh, there as probably the kind of last sort of standard, um, what should we say, English-type manager coming up through um, the club and taking over. And then since then, it's been uh, Europe where Barnsley have looked for their managers. So Heckingbottom obviously went off to Leeds, didn't he? That didn't go well. Uh, Jose Marais came in, could not keep Barnsley up. Remember the big mitigating factor there is Barnsley were really good that season and then lost um, Hurahan and Bree and Winnell as the season went on and then Heckingbottom as well. So a bit of a mitigating factor there. And then you can see Daniel Stendel came in, did really well, got them promoted out of League One. Uh, they came second to Luton, didn't they? Um, and then something amiss at the start of the next season. They won the opening game, didn't they, against uh, Fulham. And in the end, I think it was like 12 or 13 without a win. Then that big, huge, long gap to hire Gerhard Strube, you can see coming in there. So pretty much at this time last year, I was doing exactly the same thing. I was researching a uh, new manager for Barnsley who... I'll be honest, who I'd never heard of. Um, but we all very much grew to like Gerhard Struber, didn't we? Um, and I've done it in one of my other videos where we worked out the table from when Struber was there. And Barnsley were a pretty comfortably competitive championship side, not a relegation side, over Struber's tenure. Obviously, factor in then the poor start and the firing of Stendhal and the long hiring period. And they ended up avoiding relegation on the last day of the season, the last minute of the season, if we remember um, down there at Brentford, wasn't it, on the last day of the season? Incredible stuff there. Um, you can see Struber went out this season on the 15th of October. We'll talk a little bit more about Barnsley this season um, at the end of the video. But that's what's happened. The last two hires, Stendhal, Struber very much in this vein with Valerian Ishmael. Um, there is his playing career. You can see he was a good player, wasn't he? Um, playing for Strasbourg. Look, Crystal Palace there in 98. Lance, um, Strasbourg again. Werder Bremen. And then Bayern Munich for a couple of years then. Uh, you don't get there without being a good player. And you also don't win uh, two Bundesliga titles, a couple of um, German Cups, a French Coupe de Ligue. Um, and uh, twice, actually, once with Lance and once with Strasbourg as well, and the Coupe de France as well. So this guy was a good player. Look, it doesn't mean anything. We've seen way, way better. Bobby Charlton was a bad manager, which normally ends arguments, doesn't it? Because don't get many better players than him. But there's calibre. He's going to work. He's going to have worked at some big clubs with some big names and under some big managers. Um, here's what he's done as a manager. And I do apologise. That's really small print I had to do to get up there. Um, but Hanover 2, Wolfsburg 2, Nuremberg was a bit of a disaster. Then back to Wolfsburg 2. By the way, at Wolfsburg 2, both times he got them um, won their divisional league, but then didn't get promoted through the playoffs. Um, 
But then, uh, very interestingly, look, Apollon uh, Simarens in uh, the Super League of Greece. He lasted one game and then fell out with the owner there. So um, hopefully that won't happen at Barnsley. But there it is, Lask there and a really, really good season. Um, that's the Europa League table. You can see topping it with Sporting and PSV and Rusenberg. And I've put up the second game against Manchester United. In the end, I think the quarterfinals. Um, losing that game 2-1 and taking the lead in that. Obviously, the other game was lost 5-0. And Ismail had gone by that point as well. But I'm saying that was the peak of their powers in the Europa League. So, uh, very much known on the European stage last season. However bit of controversy in the Austrian Bundesliga. You can see there Lask in fourth, but why are they in fourth? They've won 20 games out of 32. Well, you can see there Austrian Bundesliga leaders Lask have been docked 12 points for breaking coronavirus related rules in practice sessions. Lask admitted to staging full contact training sessions ahead of the proposed top flight restart on June the 2nd, despite the fact all clubs have been cleared to get back on the pitch in small groups. So, a um, bit of controversy here um, with uh, Valerian Ishmael and Lask, who went against the guidance that you could only train in groups. They went full contact, full um, team before they were supposed to. I believe, and I think this um, next article points this out, that they were leading the Austrian Bundesliga. Now, I'm no expert here, but it seems to be one of these ones that splits in half and then the points total goes down, um, maybe to make it a little bit more competitive. I don't know if there's any Austrian football experts. Reply in the comments with that one. But I think they were leading the way. Um, there you go. Austrian side, Lask Linz, uh, would dock six points. So that was, the 12 was halved essentially because of uh, what happens on their, um, on their business there when they split down the league table. Um, breaching coronavirus lockdown rules, which torpedoed their title hopes there. Lovely stuff. Um, so they sacked uh, coach Valerian Ishmael. Um, this was secretly filmed. This is all very um, scandalous, isn't it? Um, whether he was the full guy, whether it was totally his decision, I don't know. Don't want to get into that. But what it does tell us is that a manager who was doing very well in the Austrian League and in the Europa League seems to have been fired for some strange controversy. So... If I'm a Barnsley fan, I have my fingers crossed that they've got themselves another good manager who just, you know, happened to be available because of this scandal. Um, who knows? Everyone said that Struber was so highly rated and they were lucky to get him. And we did enjoy him, didn't we? A lot. So um, Barnsley fans will be hoping that's the case. Um, the worst case scenario is, um, is this guy um, a little bit nefarious? let's just say, with his practices there? Or will Barnsley fans be thinking, oh, this guy's a winner. He'll do anything uh, to win. Who knows? And they'll be hoping that he's not the guy that... Uh, that it wasn't his fault that he went out of that uh, Greek club after one day. So, um, interesting fella by the looks of it, Valerian Ishmael. This is what he's going into. He's going into a Barnsley side one place above the relegation zone with four points, but with no victories so far and coming back into the Gerhard Struber narrative it looked like Struber had kind of um, lost it with Barnsley by the end gave a odd interview after their game at Borough saying about ambition and uh, you know players coming and going and whatnot and then all of a sudden uh, well Jacob Brown went out to Stoke didn't he before the season started but then uh, Ritz Meyer went back on his loan or uh, Ludovic, both of those players then all of a sudden went, didn't they? And very some strange goings on there. And, and then Struber goes back off to the Red Bull group to work for um, New York. So all wasn't happy at the start of this season. Um, there are the games, obviously losing to the Division uh, League One rivals Luton. I was lucky enough to be at that Barnsley-Reading game behind closed doors. Uh, believe you me, it would have been a very different story without the red cards, I think. But then again, Reading have won all of their tight games this season, so who knows? 0-0 draw with Coventry. There's the last game for Struber at Borough. And then 2-2, 2-2, 1-1. And the narrative for the last few games, Barnsley have good players, Barnsley play nice football, Barnsley score goals, Barnsley don't win. So that's what he's kind of going into. 
Um, Barnsley fans, correct me if you disagree. Just quickly, those were the last two big games Ishmael played at um, Lusk. And you can see, and this might save a little bit of time, he's playing the same system that Barnsley have played this season. The three at the back, two wing backs, double pivot in midfield, one central striker, maybe some rotation up front with two narrow um, holding with wing backs going outside as you, and you try and attack with those numbers. That is very much on trend with the championship at the moment. We know tactical trends all work in groups, don't they? And people follow and adapt against. That's what's happening in the championship. A lot of three at the backs and one up top, three up front, etc. I'm sure we'll get, a, with every trend comes a solution and people will start to overload the two in midfield and try and do that. So it swings and roundabouts. But that might save some, some time. And it might also say that some of the Barnsley players might well fit. I like the Barnsley squad. I said when they were choosing a new manager, they needed to pick someone maybe a little bit in the ilk of Struber to get the best out of these players. I used the example of the team I support, Ipswich, who went from Mick McCarthy to Paul Hurst. And Paul Hurst then asked Mick McCarthy players to play in a Paul Hurst way. Um, obviously not as well as Mick McCarthy would have done it. And it was a complete disaster. So you need that the manager needs to work with the players he's got in a way that works for those players. And I think from that point, it's a, it's a Struber-esque appointment, isn't it? Look, obviously, go figure, he works in Austria. Um, he may well know of some of these players, certainly going to have come up against some of them as they've come across. And obviously, Dominic Frieser was at Lask, so um, expect him to be in the team and known to Ishmael. But um, the succession planning looks fairly good. And you look at the squad, and um, Walton has now got the shirt in goal. They've been playing Solbauer, um, Anderson and Hellick at the back. That seems a decent enough back three. Keep them together. They've got Hal May as well there to work. In terms of wing backs, so Callum Styles, uh, sorry, Callum Britton has just come in. Callum Styles has played wing back. Um, I think Clark Adur has played down the left, Jordan Williams. So they seem well stocked at wing back. Then in your central midfield, obviously, I said Ritz Meyer had gone. So maybe we start to see. Um, Matty James who started the last game didn't he Alex Moat's excellent and then up the top there Herbie Kane has just come in for over a million quid we think and then look Chaplin Frieser Woodrow Schmidt Simos Thomas they've all played there's plenty plenty of options there I like the Barnsley squad and at, at championship level it's not it's not bottom six with the right manager. And people like me and our 1-24s, to we may well be proved wrong, were putting Barnsley, you know, in the middle of the table saying, look, good players. They seem to have brought in good European players, well scouted. They work well with this manager in this system. So um, the, the expectation here is that Barnsley have had a bad start to the season, a bit of chaos with um, Struber going. But now Ishmael, who seems to be a sensible enough replacement, given what they've had as the previous manager, should now be able to raise them up the the, um, the league table, would be my thought, if it goes well, obviously. Um, I think there should be a rising tide, shouldn't there? And um, again, he's, he's up against it because it's seven games. But look, this season for Barnsley, it's seven games, not, I don't know, 15 or... 18 or whatever it was last season by the time they finally replaced Struber I have replaced excuse me Stendhal I know the dates uh, match up fairly similarly I think it was 20th of November but remember we started a month later this season so uh, he's going into this first mad run of five straight games um so on the surface of it I like it the succession planning seems to be sensible um in the best case scenario they've picked up a manager who was doing well at Lask and there's been some scandal and he's now out of a job and they've got him. The worst case scenario is he is a bit nefarious. He was out after one game in Greece and he's done this naughty training session and um, he's not to be trusted and it won't last. That's the, the black and white. I'm sure it lays somewhere there, but good luck. Good luck to Barnsley and good luck to Valerian Ishmael. I happen to think on the basis of the playing squad and the fact that... Uh, don't get cross with me Wickham fans, that we do seem to have whipping boys in the division and we have Sheffield Wednesday on minus 12, that 
Barnsley shouldn't really be getting relegated this season. But who knows? Who knows how it'll all pan out? And if Struber and some of the Barnsley fans who have complained to me are right about the ownership, Barnsley managers have got a bit of a tough job in terms of there's been a complaint of lack of ambition. Now, look, I know nine out of ten football teams um, fans think that they lack ambition. Look, they, they, everyone thinks that they should spend loads of money and give their managers all the best players. But Struber was saying it as well. Uh, so whether that was him politicking to get back to the Red Bull group, I don't know. But maybe there's something in it. You'll let me know in the comments, I'm sure. But again, good luck. Uh, Valerian Ishmael, welcome to the Madhouse. Get your thoughts in if you are a Barnsley fan, if you know anything about Austrian football or um, Ishmael as a player, I'll hold my hands up. I'm I'm not going to BS you guys here. If I don't know the guy, I'll say I don't know the guy and go ahead and do my research. I don't know, I don't know the guy. So if you know anything, do let me know in the comments. Uh, very quickly, uh, for this five-game fortnight, the uh, entire channel is sponsored, thank you so much, to FanFirst. www.fanfirst.co.uk is a user-generated, fan-generated um, ratings website. So, if you've ever opened the newspaper and seen the ratings out of 10 for the players, agreed, disagreed, then had a discussion based on it, who's the best player, who's the worst player, well... You can do it yourself now. Put your money where your mouth is. Go ahead, register your club, register your email, and go and get rating. Not only can you rate the players, though, you can rate the managers, you can rate the entertainment, you can rate the referee, even the VAR in Premier League games. Good bit of fun. Go over there, www.fanfirst.co.uk. And, as ever, get your comments in on this video. And Valerian, Valerian Steele, I keep thinking of a Game of Thrones, Valerian, if anyone can help me with the pronunciation as well, being as everyone does expect me to speak 100 languages fluently, Valerian Ishmael is the new Barnsley manager. Get your thoughts in in the comments. He sat in the stand at Millwall. He'll be doing his first game this midweek. Thank you for watching Over and Out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to see more videos from this channel. Hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload. Ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.